Dominating the late game is a true art, finding your groove, and you might just get a Twitter post worthy in game clip. Needless to say, racking up many kills in a stacked in game scenario is not an easy task. That's why not everyone can do it, quite the opposite, in fact. Only a small percent of the top 1% of players can consistently get into a scrim lobby and slay out. Hope isn't lost, ladies and gentlemen. All right, be encouraged. If you're watching this video, you are right on track. But what's going on, guys? This is your guy, your friend. It is me. I am back, Keith Allen. Hey, I want to let you know that I believe in you. I really, really do. I'm your number one fan. Connect with me as soon as you can on my Instagram. I want to inspire you guys to not only be the best in this game, but also to be the best in life. I really believe that this is your time. This is your season to fulfill things and do things and succeed in things you never had before. So don't give up. Keep going. You're about to be there. Today, we're going to be taking a look on how to dominate the late game with an emphasis on high kills. Did you hear what I said? I said high kills. Who wants high kills and win the game? That's what I'm talking about. There is just so much content to cover with the end game that I would be doing you guys an injustice not making this video right now. Also, we are trying to develop Fortnite content that you guys will actually use in practical end game scenarios. So if you guys appreciate all the work that we do here at Pro Guys, make sure to go down to that like button and just give it a little click. It's very easy, very simple. It literally takes like one second. That was five seconds, so you could have did that five times. All right, see? Last but certainly not least, if you're looking to take your gameplay to the next level, I recommend that you check out Play With Pros, a Pro Guides offered service where we have 24-7 live coaching from some of the best players in the game. Head on over right now to ProGuides.com. Trust me, you will not regret it, guys. All right, guys, sit back, relax, get my favorite candy. You already know what that is. That's that bunch of crunch I just had in the movie theater the other day. It was so good. And let's start the show. Racking up kills in the end game needs to be met with a naturally aggressive playstyle. Think about it. How are you going to get a lot of kills if you don't put yourself in a position to do so? I mean, you're going to kill them with your mind? It's not going to happen. Sitting in your box all game until the zone forces you to migrate just isn't going to cut it, guys. That's if you actually want a lot of kills. If you thrive under a more passive strategy and you just want to like look at the sky, all right, well, more power to you. But this video might not complement your style. So keep that in mind. You might need to change up your play style if you want to really grasp the concepts of this video. OK, backtracking to the original point. Naturally aggressive play style. Yes. So we are going to touch on how to adapt the style to the end game. But for now, I want to lay some ground rules, so to speak. I want you guys to build a mental checklist before you even decide to get aggressive. Because if the checklist isn't fully met, you're going to find yourself in some tricky predicaments. This checklist kicks off with taking inventory. Yes, sir. This is the first thing you absolutely have to do before going full beast mode. End game is a bit tricky because most people are generally going to have at least a decent loot since less than half the lobby is typically alive at this point in the game. Less people equals more loot per person in most cases. Taking inventory comes in multiple forms, but mainly comes down to a few factors. One factor is your loot. Do you have good weapons? Pump AR combo, maybe a golden tack shotgun. If you've got a weapon combination that you are comfortable with, then you are already on a good track. What if you have a great tack and an AK? Well, maybe it's time to get cheeky and play a little bit more passive. Look for good opportunities as they come, but you really don't have any choice to force engagements. If you have the weapons to back it, then I suggest erasing the idea of playing super aggressive. It just won't work out well with you unless you love being in the lobby. Next is health. Are you 200 HP or at a minimum 150 HP? This is a must have as anyone you fight could easily get a lucky shot on you just like that. And the less the HP you have, the more likely it is going to be lethal. Not only that, but if you don't have a decent amount of healing items to back yourself up, then it might just be a disaster. If you've only got five bandages and are already teetering around the 150 HP mark, maybe a push isn't the best for your game. To cut to the chase, either you've got to be around 200 HP or have some good healing items. If not, do not play overly aggressive. Unless, again, your favorite place is the lobby. The last factor, ladies and gentlemen, that comes to mind on our checklist is material count. This is more of a double-edged sword because regardless of your material count, the previous criteria has been met. This point is a bit moot. Yes, I said the word moot. The actual use for checking your materials is realizing how desperately you need to force an engagement. Sometimes playing this aggressive strategy in the end game is out of necessity and not headhunting. If you've got mats or pretty darn close to it, yes, I said the word darn, <laughs> my favorite word, then the aggressive strategy is still nice, but not just something you feel forced into. On the other hand, if you're running low on materials, say sub 100 builds, before moving zones and below 20 builds towards the final circle or two, it may sway you to make a move on someone. 
realizing all of these different aspects guys of your inventory and how they actively affect what decision you should be making is a key aspect to successful in games going for high kills is always nice all right that's the best feeling in the world but if the risk exceeds the reward then you might as well play it safe Professional Fortnite players usually think about these points subconsciously since they have had so much experience in in-game scrims. They realize the boundaries of what their inventories can offer them when it comes to in-game aggression, while also knowing when they don't have a choice and whether or not to force a fight. This is when I wish I had an AR, but it's all good. Ooh. <laughs> I really shouldn't be challenging that. <laughs> you just have to know in that time whether you could do it or not. Next up, positioning yourself optimally. When you know you're going to be playing in games with more combat, you don't exactly need to put yourself in the quote unquote best positioning, which is really just a fancy way of saying high ground. Think about it. How do you expect to get a lot of those close quarters combat where most aggressive kills actually happen when you're on a spot so separated from the people you want to get closest to? Okay, so I don't mean you should just instead put yourself on the absolute low ground or any other super exploitable position because that would just be, how should I put this? What's the nicest way I can put this? Stupid. People think like I'm retarded. I agree with that. Stupid. Yes, sir. Whoa, Keith Allen. Okay, buddy, calm down. That that sounded really harsh, all right? No, there's, there's a better way I could put that, guys. I'm really sorry. Putting yourself on low ground and exposing yourself uh, like that, that wouldn't be stupid. That would be, uh, how about this? Stupid, stupid. Stupid. That's better. Yeah. So what I'm really trying to get to my friends is that once you've already addressed your mental checklist and decided, you know what, I have what I need to have to be super aggressive right now. This is what I'm going to do. All right, the first thing that comes to your mind is you gotta find yourself both a safe and populated spot. Then the easiest way to get aggressive and gave kills is by isolating a single person into a box fight without even risking the third party. We already posted an in-depth video regarding box fights about a week or two ago, so check that out as soon as you can. This video isn't about the box fight itself though, so let's keep it going. Anyways, a good rule of thumb to put yourself in spots that allow you to isolate a single person out is the middle ground. If the zone has a hill inside of it, try posting yourself on the side of the hill and work your way from there. If there's not a hill, then maybe finding a middle ground turtle to build yourself adjacent or above to decrease the risk of the third party action will be great. Hopefully by now, you're beginning to see why I'm bringing up these points. The idea is that if you wanna get aggressive, you just need to do it in a smart way. If you don't access your options in the way that I just described, you're going to end up leaving yourself super vulnerable to the lobby's wrath. <laughs> and let me tell you guys, you do not want that to happen. From personal experience, getting sprayed by the entire lobby, it's just its not fun. It's not fun. It's actually quite the opposite. It's, it's, it's horrifying. <laughs> just spare yourself the agony and the broken keyboards, all right? And by experience, I know about some broken keyboards. I just had an accident this morning for unknown reason. So uh, if anybody actually has a keyboard they want to spare me or sell to me, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm open for that. Yes, I'll be good. I'll be fine. I just need some therapy and uh, some Skittles. All right, anyways. Now you've successfully racked up a few kills in the end game. Feeling good? Yeah, good for you. But moving zones have just started. It's time to reassess the situation as we look ahead to the moving zones. One of the biggest pitfalls that I see from people who are already good at playing aggressive is a lack of management skills when it comes to knowing when they need to prioritize zone over limbs. I know it's hard, you wanna get those kills, but you gotta watch out for what's going on around you. This is why I think it's most beneficial to get yourself ahead of the zones and closer to safety. You can still slay out using this tactic. It basically just takes a lot out of the risk that riding the back of the zone puts you into. When your back is against the zone, oh my goodness, it only takes one exposed angle for your HP to get melted, not to mention other zone riders could also pop out of nowhere and send you packing back to the home screen where you gotta hear that dang on song. Gosh, I hate what happens. This doesn't even take in the fact that if the zone pulls over a hill or there isn't a low ground path for you to freely rotate, you're gonna die to a zone a lot. Your mind needs to think about priorities. First, am I safe and ahead of the zone? If so, then get aggressive against the other players who are looking to safely rotate into the next zone. If you know someone is low on HP or in an exploitable spot, take the time to secure the extra kill point. But if you answer no to the initial question, then your main priority needs to be getting yourself in a position that lets you answer yes to the question. Obviously, you know, sometimes you need to take a fight, even if you aren't in a good position to begin with. I get it. Like if someone jumps in your face or impulses into your tunnel, I get it. Again, you just have to claw your way out of the situation in that case. The real goal is just really to just never put yourself in a vulnerable spot to begin with. And that, my friends, is why I bring up this point. Use the primitive survival priorities that us as humans have evolved to develop. First, water, shelter, food, fire. Very easy. Yes, 
Once the necessities are taken care of, then go for anything else. For Fortnite, it's just no different. The essentials, you're safe, you're in a good spot, you're ahead of zone, then go for some solid aggression. Until you've covered your essentials, nothing else should take mental priority. Okay, now that you've done everything to a T, and it's now among the final two moving zones, it's an intense top 10 situation. But you've already got a generous handful of eliminations to boot at this point. Use whatever methods necessary. Impulses, launch pads, cranking, whatever it takes, yo. We gotta get it done. You should be stacked on utility and mats simply because you went on a slaughter streak that topped you off time after time. Once you're on height, you're basically guaranteed another few kills. From targeting the edge zone straggler to finishing off the last player or two for the victory royale, the high ground will put you in the most ideal spot to finish off an already impressive game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's recap. One, take inventory and ask yourself if playing aggressively is even possible. Two, once you know you can fight, position yourself accordingly. Find a safe position that also gets you knee deep into the action. Three, stay ahead of moving zones. Oof. Safety is a priority, my friends. Then your aggression will naturally follow. And finally, number four, make a high ground play as late as possible. It'll net you a few extra kill opportunities and increase your chance of wrapping things up with an excellent epic victory royale. There it is, guys, a chronological guide for your high kill late game scrims. Once again, this is your guy, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me right now on my Instagram. I would just love to hear from you guys. Hey, we believe in you. I believe in you. You can do it, man. You can do it. Also, make sure to leave a like and comment your favorite part of the video. It just keeps us motivated, you know, more than you can even imagine. Other than that, we'll see you next time.